Happy Father's Day. I do, what is it like for you to turn around and somebody with it as a father behind you and said congratulations for being a father? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's an amazing thing, isn't it? Uh, this morning, I got up and and uh, the phone started to ring, and, and uh, it's a blessing. And I thought. I thought it's so unfair, it's so unfair that so many, the devil can steal so many blessings that uh, to say the word to a dad or uh, for a son to say to, or the dad say to the son, uh, Happy Father's Day, we love you. That is, just blows me uh, up in a way. Praise the Lord for that. Well, this morning we have a very, very interesting, uh, we have had a very interesting uh, day yesterday. Uh, in in uh, this morning, uh, this, uh, there's, uh, you probably noticed in your bulletin there, nobody preaching. Isn't, isn't that a blessing? No, it's not. <laughs> uh, but uh, we, uh, yesterday we weren't quite sure who's going to preach. So there was a little bit of jumping back and forth and... Uh, about uh, 10 o'clock, we found out who was going to preach, and, and still I don't know if I am, but we have a, a very special day today, uh, Abe and, uh, and Margaret uh, uh, Fair, Mara. they have a, a, a handed out application form for, for membership in this place, and uh, they also want to, they have a, a filled out an application form to work with E free and have been accepted, so they are getting uh, just it's just like landing and flying up again, and then they're going to go to Bolivia and uh, do mission work there. So this morning we have uh, 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 given them the, the the permission or the okay to come and share their testimony, and then I said whatever time is is uh, left of the day I will fill it. Uh, did you bring lunch? <laughs> no, you're scared. So, Abe and uh, Margaret, would you come up at this moment and then um, share your testimony? And then, while ever as a leftover, we'll uh, try to preach a message. Yeah, there. Well, good morning to you all. Um, there's many faces in here that, that we know and that we have known from the past. There's probably quite a few of you that probably that we've never had an opportunity to meet. But uh, we have been greatly blessed and challenged in this congregation. And we started coming here uh, last June. We've been here on and off. Uh, at the beginning of this year, we went to Bible school for, for about four months. So that we weren't here for that whole time. So just kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of where you've been in and out early. I mean, from June of last year till the end of the year. And then now I'm back we actually live in the area right now. So anyway, I want to just kind of let you know kind of who we are. And actually, first, I want to let you know who we have been. <laughs> uh, I was born and raised in Mexico, and my parents moved uh, to Canada in 1988. And um, so at that time, we would have been attending the old colony. And then in 91, we got married. And uh, that's where our journey together began. Um, we wanted to get married. Um, we didn't have specific goals that we talked about or anything. <clears throat> After we got married, my wife was, uh, many times she would ask me if uh, we wanted to sit down and read our Bible together. And for me, it became a nag. I, I just, I had no interest in it. And she kept asking me if he wanted to read it together, and I just, and all of a sudden, I was, I was just so tired, I didn't want to hear it, I just finally told her, look, I want nothing to do with it, please leave me alone. And <clears throat> so, and as you can imagine, our marriage just began to deteriorate more and more, and we ended up moving to Alberta, we ended up living there for seven years, and even while we lived there, we, we just, there was a continual deterioration. We went and sought help from the uh, old colony ministers many times. Um, 
there was always just a try harder. What I so appreciated about this morning's message is that uh, we've already heard is that our position in Christ, if we don't know our position in Christ, we will apply all kinds of different avenues. We will, we will try so many different things in our own strength to try to strengthen us or strengthen others or whatever. If we leave Christ out of the equation, there is no help. So in 95 is when we moved to Alberta. So we lived in Alberta for another seven years. No, another five years before I got saved. Because our marriage was so hard, so bad, we didn't communicate. I didn't even let my wife know. We came back to Ontario here. I had a brother that was already converted at this time, and he led me through to the Lord. And of course, my wife was very interested in finding out what my young brother had discovered and what, what he was, uh, how his uh, life had been changed and all that. But because our marriage was so bad, we didn't communicate. I kept her away from my brother, and I just went and talked to him on my own, and he would just continuously point me to the scriptures. I didn't have to deal with my brother's ideas. I didn't have to deal with, with what he was trying to tell us. I had to deal with scripture. I had to deal with God. It was God that, that I had to deal with in my heart. <clears throat> so on our way back to Alberta, my wife, she has told me later, but anyway, she, she had noticed there was something different. But she, was, she had purpose to test me to see if I was for real. It lasted some weeks, and then I fell. I fell miserably. I couldn't, in my newfound faith, under testing, I didn't last. And then in 2002, we moved back to Ontario. At that point, we moved back to Leamington. And, and back in Leamington, we, we were part of a congregation there. And just having so much of our past to deal with and not knowing how to deal with all of that, uh, it took a couple of years and I fell back into sin. And I started living a double life. At this time, our children, well, our children were already grown. Our daughter by this time was 10, 9 when we moved back to Ontario. And so there began another period of very much, a very, very hard part of our marriage began. It just began to pressure and pressure us because I was living a double life. And then my wife, my wife knew what I was, what, what I was into and she, of course, applied the grace of God in her life. And uh, <clears throat> she came up to me one day and she said, Abe, hey, she says, I know what you're into. And I still love you, but I will not love the things that you do. But that day, I would have rather had a two by four over my head than have her tell me those things. Because that just shattered me from the inside. I couldn't handle it. And then there began a journey of very... A journey of convicting. The Holy, the Holy Ghost began to convict me and just began to break me, break me down. And that took uh, uh, several months. <clears throat> and then I was just ready to just deal with everything in my life. And I surrendered to God. I, I surrendered everything to God at this point. And uh, <clears throat> so the Lord has been very, very faithful to us over the last number of years, just showing me again and again, where our need is. Our need is in Him. If we go and find anything outside of Jesus Christ, we will always come up short. And we talk, if we, we heard John Bamman talk about victories. I have found victories that I never imagined possible. And that is, in Jesus Christ, we find that victory. Whenever we have things that are going on, that are hard in our lives, that we that we're facing, if we're trying to go and find our own solutions to them, we are driving down, we're going down further and further. <clears throat> it's it's kind of like the, the idea that runs through my mind is when uh, God promised Abraham a son. And we have a long period of time where there is no son born, and Abraham and Sarah are getting old, and finally they decide to help God out. They bring Hagar into the, into the situation, 
and she bears a son, and it's Ishmael. <clears throat> Ishmael. Ishmael is born of the flesh. And what is born of the flesh is rejected by God. We see that in uh, John 3, verse 6. It says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. And we see, again and again, we see that in, in, in the scripture. First Adam was rejected. Second Adam was accepted. And we see that Saul was rejected and David was accepted. We see so many of these parallels running in scripture where the things that are of the flesh, the things that are born of the flesh, God is not pleased with them. And so that's what I say. There was, there was a part of me that was not willing to yield up everything to Christ. And so when I did, finally, when I came to the point and to the place where I was able, where I was uh, willing to yield up everything in my life to the Lord, I came to the place where I said, Lord, whatever you want for my life, that is what we will follow after. My wife and I, as strange as this may sound, but from very early on in our marriage, we knew that God was leading us to help poor people. We always found ourselves working with poor people, very uh, misfortunate or very poor people. We found ourselves in those situations so many times. And so when, when, when this whole thing happened, I just said to God, I said, God, if you want us to go, we had a burden for Bolivia, we had a burden for Mexico and Haiti. So we began to take that into prayer and we just lifted it up before God and asked him to open and or close doors for us to, to show us what he wanted us to do. And one of the commitments that we made was we had a business and a home. And so we asked the Lord <clears throat> to send somebody our way without us making it known that that would be for sale, both the home and the business. Within, within four months, we had, a, we had a buyer for the business. And as soon as we started into the paperwork situation with the selling the business, the business took off in such a drastic upward climb that I came home and I cried to my wife and I said, maybe we ought to hang on one more year. And there was a test for me to see if I was willing to give up or not. And we had back and forth, we had a few situations like that and in, in the sale of that, to where we had to console each other and keep pointing to Christ and saying, this is what Christ has called us to. And so that's what brings us to where we are today. We have found great encouragement here, and our greatest desire is that you would pray for us as a family, that you would continue. We know that we cannot do this on our own. We have no strength in our own. We need the prayers of all the people. And... As Pastor Henry already mentioned, we have applied to go to Bolivia through the Evangelical Free Church and minister to the people there. And so we are leaving, Lord willing, end of September, beginning of October. So we are very grateful for everyone here. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, many of you we know on a more personal level, some of you we know from when, when, we grew, when we grew up back before we were married and so on, but uh, we look forward to getting to know more of you. For myself, my salvational testimony is uh, when Abe was, uh, after Abe was converted, I decided that I was going to test him because he wasn't willing to talk to me. And I saw that he failed and our marriage got just worse Every day, and it uh, brought me to the point where I knew that uh, I was in a corner where I cried out to God that uh, if there is, uh, for me to get out of this corner, I had to be lifted up, lifted out from the top, or I had to end my life right there. And uh, at this time, we went to a counselor, and he led me through. And it was, uh, I don't know how it happened, I don't know what happened, but I just know that uh, I was a very angry person when I walked into the uh, counselor's room and the counselor asked me if uh, Abe and I were both going to go in there and I told him, no, we were not both going to go in there. 
And uh, I went in there by myself, and about 15 minutes later, he went and told my husband to come in there, and he was so excited and said that your wife has just accepted the Lord. And at this time, I was still like, wow, he's really excited about this. I still had no idea what all this meant. I just knew that I needed help. And uh, he had led me through a prayer. So I had accepted Christ. A little bit later, he asked me if I was feeling anything. And, and I really felt, I really knew I need something. So I really felt and uh, I tried to feel if I was feeling something. And I, yeah, I think I do. And uh, that is when it started to uh, do something in my heart. And by the time I left the office, my anger was exchanged for, for love and brokenness on our way home from this uh, counselor. I repented to my husband, I asked his forgiveness and I told him that I was going to submit to him and allow him to leave me because uh, the thing that scared me so much was the church thing, that he was le gonna lead me in a wrong direction and uh, God clearly showed me that, uh, Margaret, I will be there for you and I will not allow your husband to misguide you if you will place your trust in me. And I was able to do that and I committed to doing that and that life has never been the same. That verse where it says that all things have passed away and all things have become new. That is my testimony, that I have never been the same. We have had many, many trials. Since Abe's falling back, it, has, uh, it was not something that supported me in growing in my Christian life. And uh, therefore, we have had many trials, which God brought us through and we had uh, counseling done, and uh, after the counseling was, uh, was over, the last meeting that we had with the counselor, he said that uh, there's nothing more that I have for you, God. There's nothing more that I can share with you guys. And basically that you haven't listened, you have not yielded to what I have to say to you, and therefore there's nothing more that I can say. I have said everything that I could say. And that was so devastating for me because this was my last help, my last hope. And at that time, I went home and I started crying out to, crying out to God. And it was shortly after that where God showed me very clearly that Margaret, this is where I have wanted you in the first place. I wanted you to come to me, not to people. And at that time, I looked at that whole thing and I thought, I, I thought to myself that, wow, why didn't anybody just tell me go to Jesus? Because this is the answer. They could have told me this right from the beginning. Nobody would have had to spend so much time into our lives if they would have just told us this. And God, through that, showed me my life and the areas where I was failing. And uh, through that, did a great work in my life where I started seeing that it was a great opportunity for me to learn to be a Christian under bad circumstances. I uh, really fell in love with Jesus at that time. And uh, when Abe started changing his life, it was beyond of my imagination and it was uh, beyond of what I had expected that God would do in our family. And I know that it is only in Jesus Christ. It was nothing that I have done, but it was Jesus that reached down in mercy and helped Abe see, see for himself who he was and also showing me who I was. And at this time, we are uh, planning to going out to Bolivia and uh, be missionaries out there and I would have felt more prepared to do that some years ago than I do right now. Everybody says that it is a good place if we, are, if we feel that we're not prepared to go, but that is a better place. And then obviously this must be a good time for me to go out now because I feel very unprepared. I don't know what we're going to face and just a little bit of sharing that we did last night about go, finding out the things that are going on there. It's, uh, it's doing something to my heart where I'm thinking that, wow, that, is that going to tear me down or am I going to be able to uh, look to Jesus and see that Jesus loves these people and uh, that the worst people, that these are the ones that we need to pray for the most. My heart always goes out to those that are suffering under the hands and that those are the ones that are more so in my heart than those offenders, those that are making it difficult for those, but it is, those are should be more under on my heart that uh, that are causing this grief and a hardship for for the people and that is just an area that uh, God is teaching me right now to uh, to trust him and to love those that he loves and to see the extent of his forgiveness yeah we uh, because of time this morning we, uh, we probably each have 45 minutes that we could share filling in all the details that all the things that happen in between but we want to just encourage you 
that in the Lord there is victory. If there are hurting marriages here, uh, <clears throat> if somebody would have told us six years ago that we would have the marriage that we have today, I would have laughed them in their face and said that they were crazy. But I can testify today that that our love and our that our love for each other and our love for the Lord and just the marriage relationship that we have is far beyond what we have ever experienced. And and we didn't. We are so indebted to the Lord for what He has done for us. It's not what Abe and Margaret have done. This is what the Lord has done. And so let's rejoice and be glad in that. Tremendous blessing. They have been a tremendous blessing to, to us. Margaret is, uh, is my step uh, cousin. <clears throat> the... Uh, <clears throat> I know her parents uh, very well. She wasn't, I don't think she was born when, when we left from the, but that's uh, another story there. So, and then later I lived at, at their place yet for a, a little while in, in, in Chihuahua where they mo had moved to. And so, uh, but, uh, uh, she cannot remember anything of that and, and, uh, 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 she was probably too young and I'm too old. <laughs> but it's, they have been a tremendous blessing. I would encourage you to <clears throat> get to know them and invite them for lunch or whatever if they have time and get to know them better. They, they have been a tremendous blessing. All right, I want to, there's uh, <clears throat> eight steps that, that, that I want to talk a little bit about the Father that we we have in the, the Bible says we got everything that we need for life and godliness, and God has supplied all of our needs according to His riches and glory. And a lot of times uh, we just don't know what is available for us or what is even put in us by God. We haven't discovered that, and so then we we let the enemy rob us from. Uh, some of those those things, and <clears throat> so I want to I want to lead you through eight uh, eight thoughts here that I have. It's uh, <clears throat> the, the what the father is is initiator. The father is an, an initiator, and uh, uh, of course we know that without a dad we could have never been a son, right? He initiates that, but also that the the, the that is the only the beginning of where he initiates the things, but many other things we can see from from our Father, which is in the heaven. Right, he started uh, the world. It says in the beginning, God created the world, and he initi initiated life. He created man, and so uh, in the Philippians chapter one verse six, that says, "And so I am sure that God, who began the good work in you." will uh, carry it out until it is finished on the day of Jesus Christ. He who began good, the good word, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. A different translation says that he has begun a work in our lives. And, uh, and, and the, Holy, the Bible t tells us that the Holy Spirit is being given to us naturally. We should be imitators of our Heavenly Father. That would be the inclination of the new man that is in us, uh, uh, placed there by the Holy Spirit, even though before we did not know Christ. Have you ever watched non-Christians and they, 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 the way they respond to their children? And you look at the Bible, the way God responds, to them, and you just see that even in their natural way, they bring out the godly nature that was there, even though they might not glorify God, they might not give God the glory or recognition, but it's there. We have had some <clears throat> tremendous blessings. I watch around here and, uh, and my own boys and kids. I watch here, there's, there's a man that I, they, they play baseball and, and all they, uh, I've ever heard, hear them talk about cars and the way they, cars and, or, or whatever they might talk about. And then all of a sudden, there is comes a time where they have a little baby, and they just change tremendously. They just their whole lifestyle is just it's upside down. Well, not not necessarily. But uh, have you ever noticed that that they they grab that baby and they hold that baby, and it looks like 
They've done this all the time. They are so natural about that. Uh, or his son, our youngest son, Abe, he, they, they didn't have uh, a children for, for 10 years, and, and Abe would never, never grab any one of his nieces or nephews when they were babies. He just always looked at them, and he, uh, it, it, it took him a second to, to and then he had seen them, and that was all he needed, and, uh, just to make whoever feel more happy that he had watched too, and, and so then he walked away. Oh, but all of a sudden they have a baby, and just, oh, they, it was just amazing. That they were there at our place, they were showing their baby, and uh, they didn't put it to bed to sleep. They were just holding that all the time. And it looked, he was clean. And I thought, Abe, where did you learn that? He was, he was changing diaper. It, it's so natural. And then uh, as a thinking is us, the nature of God is placed in us. If we just allow the nature of God to flow on us, we should, should be very obvious that the nature of God should flow through us. And, and one of the things that, 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 uh, that, uh, uh, a dad does, uh, he loves his children. Absolutely. I, I, I said this morning, before I said it, I said that the thing that has bothered me, it is that the man be so macho or so, uh, that they would not say to their children they love them and then, and then uh, hear that in return. Uh, uh, I had, it gave me such a good feeling this morning when my daughter, when my daughters and my uh, boys called me and said they loved me. And I also thought about is, do we ever say to our father, just uh, take a time and say to him, we love, daddy, we love you. It's a uh, day that we actually set apart to, to uh, build fathers or to remind them that this is the fathers, that you're important. Man, you're important. You're the initiators of life. You're the initiators of prayer. You're the initiators of loving God. You're initiators of using the word love. You're the initiator. You should be the, we should, and many of us are. You're the initiators of those. And we should take the role and we should be, feel joyful that we can take the, the initiation of uh, teaching our children about the love of God and leading them then in the word of God and to train a child in the ways of the Lord. And when he grows up, he will not depart. He might try, but he will not be able to depart from it. And then and then the second point that I want to, this is as a caregiver. In Luke chapter 13, verse 34, it says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you uh, you kill the prophets, you stone the messengers of God that God has sent uh, sent you. How many times I have wanted to put my arms around all your people, just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would not let me. And so I uh, uh, it, it tells, and the Bible says about also that 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 God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He is the supplier of our needs, and naturally a man is inclined to be the provider of the family. Can I have some hands raised and say, that's me. Yeah, that's just natural if you want to supply. I, I do remember one, one day on Christmas, I was telling my kids I would have loved to give you something that would express my love towards you or my my desire to uh, to give you what you need but uh, the limitation that i have uh, financially doesn't allow it and then one of my son in laws that i at least thought about he said dad you have given your kids principles on which to build their life on and we as in-laws we are blessed through those principles you have given them more than houses or Good uh, goodies, uh, good things that, that, that uh, you can get on earth. And I thought, uh, uh, and isn't that the truth? Heaven and earth will pass away. Houses, they will get old and cars will rust out. All of those things, they will go out. But principles, the word of God, 
you provide that things and that is there is a thing and as we are inclined to provide f physical things not, uh, material things for our kids so is our inclination to provide our family with a church with the word of god and it is placed in there it is there uh this the third point that's uh, i want and i don't want to spend too much time on on all of those things but uh, fathers, this is all in you, you know, and the only way that doesn't manifest is because the devil has come to steal, to kill, to destroy. But Jesus has come to give life and life in abundantly. And uh, the third point is, is the, the provider. Behold the fowls of the air, for they, have, they saw not, they uh, neither do they reap. Nor gather they in barns, yet the heavenly Father feeds them, and ye are much better than thy. I praise God for, for that, that he looks after me, he feeds us. And that I, I wonder sometimes, I would just wonder, do we ever really think about it? Some people will say, oh, my hands have earned this. Or some other will say, I am smart, I know how to. But if God wouldn't give strength and if God wouldn't give wisdom, nobody could do a thing. Every good thing, every perfect gift comes from above, the Bible says. In all our perversion, they are given by the Lord. And, and, and also, as fathers, the Bible says, ye that know how to good, give good gifts. Isn't that true? You, you buy your, your children toys. But I don't think we should ever forget to, to lead our people, uh, our children, to the Lord uh, and say to our children the gifts, the toys that our Heavenly Father gives us. The desires of our heart are placed there by God. And I think about the, the privileges and the blessings that we have um, meeting so many people and uh, being encouraged by them and being uh taught by them. Uh, so many of young men have approached us with such a tremendous wisdom from above. And, and I am so glad that God is meeting our physical need and our spiritual need, our spiritual food too. And the Bible uh, compares to the, 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 the birds, they are valuable. And you are a lot more valuable. And it is in us and it's in us a gift by God, give a, a place in us to wanting to provide for our children for, in the physical and then also in the spiritual and emotional. Uh, and he's a counselor. He will uh, uh, give uh, family advices. You have, uh, any of your kids, probably the older men that are here that have, uh, their kids have come and, and said, Dad, I need some advice. And, in this uh, situation. Should I buy this or shouldn't I buy this? I need some insight. Give me some insight. I, John calls me almost. He feel, I think if he would do what he would want to do, he would call me on a daily basis and say, Dad, what do I do in this situation? Give me some counsel. In Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, is for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders and the name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So it's naturally, it is in dads to give the kids an, an advice. When they get older, they get about 12 years, they said, they'd look at you and say, Dad, I know. And, uh, and then after that, they might say to you, Dad, I got better training than you do. I, I, I know better than you do. I've learned these things in school. I've learned these things somewhere else. But they get a little older and they'll say, well, maybe I should call daddy. See what he's got to say about that. And then some kids, they will then later say, I wish I still had my dad that I could ask him for some advice. I, that's me here. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I wish I had a dad that I could call up in some of the circumstances that we go through. But praise God, we have a, a heavenly a model. Dads, as, as, we, as, as fathers, we have a, a, a model 
to walk after and we have a heavenly father that we have a natural desire to counsel some of your kids might be involved in some kind of, some kind of, kind of sports and you think they're nuts they're crazy why do would they take some sports like that and it's very dangerous i uh, did it to johnny uh, he was playing football and i said uh, most dangerous sport you could have picked and he said, Dad, you were very smart. You did a lot safer. You did, uh, you got on wild bulls and wild horses. That was a lot. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Just be careful, okay? Just be careful. You, Some of you had to say that. Okay, I know, I know. But be careful. I love you, son. I don't want to see you with a broken foot or anything. So we counsel him. We, it's a natural thing to do. Praise the Lord for that. It's given by our Father, which is in heaven, placed in us. And I want to encourage you dads, even if sometimes your children don't seek for counsel, even if they don't care for your cause, give it anyways. My heavenly father does. He gives me a way. Sometimes I don't think that I need it, but he gives it to me through the word of God. And so let's keep on. Let's keep on giving our children good uh, advices. And sometimes the dad just has to take us apart and give us a good spanking. Do you know that's what I call this? Nimrod pads. Nim the rod and, and slap the pads. <laughs> They're given a gift, that's a gift by God, where it doesn't break, but where it hurts. And, it, and, and it, I know that in this country that I'd probably get in trouble for saying something like this, but I don't care. That's the way that God works. And, and there is just no other way. Sometimes our Heavenly Father takes us to and uses the Nimrod for, and, and, and our pads to. And, and He corrects us. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7, it says, If, if ye endure chast, uh, chastening, God deal it with you as of with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not, chasteneth not, or who is the child of the no, not spank? And in uh, verse nine says, Furthermore, we have had a father, we have had fathers uh, of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be uh, in subjection unto our heavenly? Father of spirits and love. See, non-corrections could mean death. Corrections, I want to say something here because uh, I've experienced both. I, I uh, This is just, a, a, and I've done this before. Whenever we spank, and, and how many of your fathers would agree with me that easiest way to spank a child is when they make you really mad? Some of you are just not honest. It is very difficult to spank a child when you're totally calm and you have absolutely no redolent in your uh, body and then, then to spank a child. It's just very, very difficult. But it is never ever is advice from me. Never spank your child when you're just outraged. Just mad. Even that might all be the reason there. But let that calm down. And then say to yourself, okay, I got to do something here. The, 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 what you've done is, is wrong. And it deserves punishment. And uh, the best way for you to remember not to do those kinds of things is when it really hurts. That's the best way that you'll remember. And, and then another advice that I want to give there is... is uh, after you've done it, let's say, now go play outside. Now go and do this. Go do that. Hug him and then say, you know what? I love you and I care for you. And I don't want you to go the wrong way. And that is why I have... And it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. I've had uh, lots of experience. <laughs> Uh, it's interesting sometimes a lot of mistakes that I've made. A lot of times that I've cried and asked my children to forgive me for making a mistake like that. And that is what we all should do as, as uh, fathers. I know our Heavenly Father never has to do that to us. 
ask us to for forgiveness for the mistakes that he made. But we do and we should be transparent in that and, and not be too proud admitting that and going and, and ask for forgiveness. And then the sixth point is the leader. The leader. You know that, that as dads, you're a leader. Christ, God does never, uh, uh, or Heavenly Father, never ever uh, you will find that he will uh, say, go do this or go do that without showing us how to do it. Right? He will equip us for whatever he, uh, the job he's given us. And then in uh, James chapter 1 verse 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of light, which whom, uh, with whom is no variableness, neither shadows of turning. There's a couple of things we can pick of this consistency, right? And it's very, very important uh, for for us to be consistent and uh, and then be that consistent leader. Be that consistent leader. Don't jump back and forth because that way that will make them start to doubt and uh, then you will have no real uh, model to follow. And the seventh point is, is, is the peacemaker. The peacemaker when there is uh, whatever there is, sometimes boys or if there is more than one child, they fight. I know your children don't do that. My kids shouldn't have, but they did. Uh, they were Christians, but th sometimes they didn't act like it. And sometimes I questioned it, and I asked them questions about it. And, and sometimes they didn't care if they were or not. At that moment, when they were just uh, mad at each other, they didn't even care if they were Christians at that moment. But then a little while later, when their rat came down, then they... Then they uh, did care again, and so then it's the, the Bible says a uh, father is also uh, sometimes just has to go there. Okay, now you ask for forgiveness and give him a hug. Have you done it? You say, okay, now give him a hug, and they say, "Do I have to?" And then they go, and then they turn like this. And, Can you forgive me? Try to get out their face as far as the, so they won't touch cheeks because they can't still can't handle it. It's too hot. But uh, nevertheless, you'd have to do it. And the Bible also says to us that we have to uh, be peacemakers. We have to make peace with everyone. And and God, that we were his enemies, and he, through Christ, sent his son, gave them up, and made peace with us. Ephesians 2 verse 15 says, Having uh, abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of uh, con uh, commandments containing the ord ordinances for, uh, for to make in himself of two one new body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. So he came and made peace. And you know that to make peace you have to give up your own feelings, you got your own desire. Uh, you know, isn't that interesting that we always say, I wouldn't have any problem living in, living in harmony with somebody else if they just would understand my ways. If they just would under, understand that my ways are better. And, and so, or, or, or my church is better or whatever it might be, then we wouldn't have a problem. But if we need to go over there, and humble ourselves and say, okay, doesn't matter who's right now. What matters is that we live in harmony, that we are united. That's what matters. But that's hard. Would you agree with me, man? It is just hard to say, okay, well, let's do it your way then. Even if I, I know it's wrong, but I'll prove you later. And then sometimes it works just back, backwards. And then the, the, the eight point and the last point that I, I want here, and then I have another eight points. <laughs> <laughs> Fasten your seatbelt. No, uh, the last point that says to rest, restore. You know that that the Bible says that He will throw our sins as far as the east is from the west, west and never remember them anymore. And that is restoration. You choose not to hold. You will not forget that what's happened. 
but you will forget what hurts and then you will restore and then don't want okay say no we are we have finally been able to forgive each other let's keep our distance so it won't happen again that isn't restoration then you got to go and get out of your way and humble yourself and go to that person you had a difficulty with and hug them and say you know what brother i love you can we have coffee together or can we have lunch together if your enemy hungers feed them uh, if, if I'm going to be invited for lunch today, I know that I'm your enemy. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, <laughs> kid. I have a, uh, and, and we we see uh, the, the 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 prodigal son story. You know, just tremendous illustration of how dad. First of all, he gives the son what he wants, and and you would ca call a wasteful father probably at the moment, right? But then later he. Hands him in again the ring after he comes back. And, and, and there wasn't proof or anything. You will see his, so, so he restores trust completely. And it's an amazing story. And I won't bother reading, but I'll tell you where the passage is written. It's Luke chapter 15. And starting somewhere from the verse 9, somewhere is there, uh, or, or verse 11 there uh, starts. And so read the passage and then, uh, minister, feed yourself with the thoughts of what is being given to you as a father. It's placed in there. The enemy has wanted to steal that. He wants to give you different emotion to take that away. But it is in there. It's passed on by you, by your heavenly father. It is there. It's in there. All of that that you read there, the father, the way the father has it, it's in there. Just got to bring it to surface. Just got to find it. Sometimes there is a, uh, or son in love, uh, when he, when they were in Mexico, they, he said he counted, started counting the oranges that was on the trees, and he loved those oranges. And he says, "Well, if I eat three a day, I will have them done by the last day that we leave." And and he kept on eating and all, and kept on finding more. And I think it's the same way with us. If we keep on looking and, and using what is there by God, then we'll come out back the next day. Oh. Some more that I see that I, it's being made available for me. I wonder, I wonder, uh, I use illustrations a lot. I like illustrations a lot. It seems like in this church, I thought about it this morning. It's all car illustrations. You know, that, uh, uh, not very long ago, a man, uh, I heard a man talk to a friend and he said that he had a car, uh, that somebody else was driving and, and, uh, and and the gadget that the car the car had was that wasn't discovered. They were useless because they were there all for the for the use, but didn't know how to use it, or never knew that they needed. And I just I have just a few things: cruise control, consistency. Cruise control is consistency. How many of you men do what I do is, is when I get on the road, I put my cruise control on because I know my foot is going down and down and down. And then as soon as I reach my speed, I push it in because that way I don't have to look for the place. I know I'm going to go consistent. And I'm not going to one time low down and on uphill and downhill speed up. Some of our lives are like that, right? <laughs> And then when we see danger, we slow down. Oh, I wasn't going to my, my uh, uh, GPS. Find your destination. Destination. Find where you're going. The Bible is a good GPS to find where you need to go to. Whatever situation is, uh, it's it's a great tool. I uh, push that in and, and, and I listen to where it wants me to turn. And sometimes it's wrong, but our Heavenly Father is never wrong. It's sunroof. I never, never heard, no. But it is uh, 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 there to let the sun shine in and to let fresh air in. And then sometimes we just let the, need to let the sun shine in. Uh, power windows, how many of you love those? How many of you don't even remember having to crank down? So oh, how, why I don't deserve this? What, what have I done wrong to, to that? Oh, and then you want to talk to the other person? You've got to lean over. Say what? So it's power windows and 
they, they are, you know, we have, and uh, you shall receive power. So the Holy Spirit has come upon you. It is available there for, for you to, to roll down the window. So, and then there's uh, power seats. And all those are gadgets. I had to, it took me a long time to find those things in my car. And you know, you know the Bible says, Come all to me, unto me, all ye that are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There is where you can get comfortable in the presence of God, you know, getting rest from all the work. And, and then there's this Bluetooth. Clear? Oh, no, that's not what I mean. One day, I, I saw this little cross on my car, and I thought, should I push it, or should I stop to push that? What is that? Does that mean all the four wheels are turned in different ways? What does that mean? So I pushed it, and it says, OnStar is not activated. If you want to press, so, 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 five, 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 whatever, and, and, and you can talk without your hand being busy, and it, the sound comes over the speakers. So, you know, talk to God. We can, with our hands free, you know, just take time to talk to God uh, in our next sound system. Turn it on so you can hear what comes over the speakers. Listen what the, God, the Lord said, said to the churches seven times. The Bible says in Revelation, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord says unto the churches. And then there's an alarm system. And... Uh, and that warrants you when somebody wants to grab your car, it shouldn't be. Uh, that's been a nuisance to us, but uh, we don't want to talk about that part. But just uh, have our alarm system on and you how, know how, you know how sometimes the Holy Spirit will prompt you when you're doing something or you do, uh, wrong or, or you're planning on doing something wrong, that that alarm system would be activated that the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit would be there uh, that would alarm you when the enemy wants to come and steal so that you would build a pr uh, protection around it, call upon the Lord in the day of trouble and he'll rescue you. Okay, let's bow our heads and close our eyes and I just would say, how many of you would say, brother, pray for me. The Lord has been speaking to me. I should be using some of my tools that I have in my car. Amen. So a few hands. Yes. Okay. Amen. Well, let's, let's go in prayer. And those that don't, those that know how to use all their gadgets that they have, intercede for those that are struggling with things in their life. Father, we want to thank you for this day that that even though we celebrate Father's Day every day, we have a relationship with you every day, but this day is a very special day that, that the world is recognized and we want to take the advantage of that, not because of the world as it, but we want to encourage every Father here not to celebrate it the way the world does it, but Lord, that we would, we would just be connected with you so closely and use all of the tools that we have been given by you to uh, run our life in such a way that would bring glory to your name. I pray for every person here this morning that has this great desire to be a father that you are to us. Lord, I know that every father's heart here, that if they have a, a little bit of your spirit working in their lives, that, that they, we would recognize that we have missed it, we have, we have missed the mark, with our children, and we would ask you that you would forgive us and, and help our children that they might also be able to forgive. And Lord, and help us, Lord, to walk in you and take the example that you are to us. In Jesus' name, amen.